Day 2 is underway. It's the Reddit Dota 2 League in-houses. This is what's kicking off the preseason in Season 2 of the RD2L. A lot of fun and learning everybody's name. So we're in here, we've got two sides, and we're ready to play Smartier, talking, <laughs> taking up the dire side captaining. Dr. Popular is drafting for the Radiant side. First up, Batrider Five removed from remain. the pool. He's still making it in the first ban. First pick. Not too surprising in that he was you know, immediately following patches. It tends to follow the same patterns until the experiments start to work themselves out. But I, I personally expect Batrider to fall off a bit. Still going to be a part of the metagame, but just not necessarily that number one hero always every game anymore. But Keeper of the Light removed, remaining. another consistently popular choice in the support. He was in the top four, top four bands all the time a little while ago. Now he's tapered off a little bit where he can sneak through much more often. There's some situational, some situational aspects to him, but he's still pretty much always a good choice. And Shadow Demon removed as well. Smarter just removing out those supports nice and early. Io also removed by the Radiant side, so a lot of supports removed out. Three out of four, in fact, of those initial bands. Supports waiting on the first pick. Life Stealer still in the pool. Uh, we saw. Magnus banned quite a bit uh, the other day. He's still in the pool. Uh, he's another one where there's a question mark. Where he is he going to end up in 6.78 when it really starts to settle in? A lone druid also in the pool. Another hero got nerfed in that most recent patch. Uh, took away that constant armlet on bear it now drains health from the bear so I don't expect we're really ever going to be seeing armlet built on uh, the spirit bear anymore haven't seen it since the patch juggernaut going to be the first choice solid as well flexible we see him go mid once in a while often in aggressive tri lanes he can be a solo laner 1v1 in the safe lane if you need him he can be a safe lane farmer pretty flexible uh, I'd say the most popular choice is to put him in the aggressive tri lane though. Now we're going to wait on the dire sides uh, follow up two picks. Ten seconds remaining. And just going to have to wait and see who it is. Rubik, nice and solid. Always going to be a good choice as a support. Flexible as well. And you can pretty much mix and match Rubik with just about any other support. He has that he has Telekinesis, which is an instant disable. Uh, Fade Bolt, good for push, counter push. Nice burst of damage. So he, he's just perhaps the most well-rounded of any support in the game. Ten seconds remaining. But will uh, Smarter decide to round out his support Five lineup or go remaining. to add in for something else, like a mid or an offlaner? Carry, perhaps. Lifestealer, again, is still in the pool. Uh, he got nerfed to open wounds, 200 range at level 1, as opposed to the constant 600 from level 1 to 4, as in 6.77. Now it scales 200, 300, 400, 500. But still should be a potent carry. We've still been seeing him get picked and prioritized quite a lot, but not necessarily. He had gotten up to that first pick, first ban status, and that's not necessarily the case anymore. Put the selection, most likely you'll even see. Uh, him as a mid, that's the most likely selection. And Nyx Assassin overlooked just a little bit, and makes it through all the way to that last pick in the first pick phase, going to be selected by the Radiant side. Nyx Assassin, a very good target when it comes to Rubik's Spell Steel. Can't really go wrong with whatever you pick up from him. In terms of continued bans, Venomancer removed, so Smarter continuing to remove out these supports. Venomancer, a little bit of an odd choice but can still be an effective support. Now we see the removal of Lifestealer. Makes it through the first pick phase, but not going to make it to the second pick phase. Ten seconds remaining. As it is, both sides are Five likely to pick remaining. up another carry. Juggernaut is usually a secondary carry to a more of a late game focused hero like the Lone Druid. 
that typical combination. You see the healing ward with the bear, 2,700 health. And the healing ward percentage base is at 4% at level... No, it's 5% at level 4. So level 4 healing ward, you've got 2,700 HP on the bear, healing at 5% per second. That's a lot of healing going on. Windrunner next removed by Smarter, sticking to his guns on the support removals. I'm not the biggest fan necessarily of Windrunner as a 4-5 support. She's another hero that's arguably the most flexible in the game. Off lane, mid, can semi-carry work as a support. But not going to see her in this game. Removed Five out by the dire team. side. And after this next ban, we'll be able to get a couple more picks on either side. The first of which will go to Smarter and the Dire. Moving into reserve time now for this one. And that's going to be the Dark Seer, another one that snuck through, but not going to make it to the second pick phase. I would not be at all surprised to see uh, the Radiant pick up lone druid in these next two picks if it's not going to be selection on the dire still looking for another support going to go clockwork that should be our off laner puck in the mid so this is very much looking like a defensive tri lane with puck mid rubik as one of the supports in the safe lane and all we have to do is sure up who that other support is and then uh who the carry is i would really like to see a visage selected by dire we see Nyx Assassin, Nyx Assassin and Lashrac. They are likely to be teamed up with Juggernaut in an aggressive tri lane, and that's why I would really like to see the Visage. Very strong 3v3. You've already removed Keeper of the Light, who's another one who really likes to be able to hit as many as possible in that, in a, with that Illuminate. But Lena is going to be the selection. You can follow up the telekinesis with the light strike array but you gotta make sure your communication is on point make sure you're not pulling the pulling your target out of the light strike array as opposed to holding or pulling them into it templar assassin the mid selection from dr popular so it'll be puck versus templar assassin mid can be an interesting lineup puck can actually phase shift to avoid some of those side blade some of that side blade harassment, though it's a trickier one compared to some other projectiles that Puck can avoid in that mid lane. Now we're going into the final ban out. Should be seeing a carry band out, probably on at least on the Radiant side, possibly on the Dire side as well. However, they stick to their guns. It will be another support despite having Nyx and Lashrac already chosen. We're in reserve time now. It's unclear what kind of hero we're looking for out of Dire. I'm almost I'm almost feeling like that's an anti-mage lineup. I don't have a good reason for it, but it just seems like this very, very solid kind of well-rounded go-to lineup that Smarter is drafted here, and that's kind of the way I think of Anti-Mage as kind of your go-to hero. It's somebody who you can rely on to be consistent in terms of a Ten carry role. Remaining. But now we're going to close out Five here. Last remaining. ban we're waiting on. Queen of Pain was removed by Smarter. Reserve time. Which, they, which uh, Dr. Popular could have ran. We could have had the aggressive tri lane TA mid and then queen of pain solo safe lane it's not too unusual to see queen of pain solo safe lane if you've got that aggressive tri lane going on but again i would expect for radiant to pick up an, uh, another harder carry to team up with that juggernaut juggernaut to buy the time carry that early to early mid game and then transition into late game on somebody else's shoulders but most definitely going to be seeing a carry selection on Dyer. There's, they still need to round out that right click. They really don't have it right now. All magic damage coming out from them. Going to need that physical damage presence. Luna, the final ban, so she's not going to be in the pool. Smarter, what is your choice? 30 seconds before you head into that reserve time. Some other heroes in the pool. We've still got Faceless Void as a selection. If we're going 
kind of unusual. You could go Dro. She's still in the pool. We as an unusual pick. Sven, if you're gonna go old school, Lone Druid mentioned a few times has made it all the way through here now. I was saying I was expecting that on the side of the Radiant, but if Dyer picks it up, it'd be a block pick. Alchemist, the selection has had a surge and going to be the choice. Now, the final pick before we get into the game goes to Dr. Dr. Popular. What are you going to go with? The fact that Lashrak and Templar Assassin were picked up before the Lone Druid suggests to me actually that he's not going to go for that, but it is a an option that would be very strong. Again, I'm looking at another carry. I'm wondering who that would be though, because I'm not entirely sure. And it is Warlock, so they're not going with another carry. They're relying it entirely on Juggernaut. So this is... If this goes late enough, Alchemist is going to be uh, too much to handle, but it's a matter if it gets there. Warlock is interesting here because Templar Assassin really likes to be mid, control the runes that way. But I don't think of Warlock as particularly great in a 1v1 safe lane scenario. So, but that looks like where he'll be. But before we see those lanes, let's describe our teams. Warlock is first out of the gate. That's our captain. It's Aesir Vanir. And looks like he's headed out towards mid with a bottle rush build. Next up, we've got our supports, first of which is Lashrak, handled by Dr. Popular. That's the actual captain. Both have captain tags. Never mind me. Lashrak, he'll be headed out towards top with that aggressive tri-lane, joined by Juggernaut, played by Ship. And along with him will be the Nyx Assassin, played by Sviz, who's actually headed toward mid at the moment. Looks like Warlock may actually be joining the aggressive tri-lane. Then down bottom is Templar Assassin played by Farah. Now for the dire side. First up, we've got the mid-hero Puck played by Kirito. Down towards the off lane, we've got Roman Ronin on clockwork. Up top, the supports. That's Teacup Pig on Rubik. And Lil Boozer on Lena, along with Alchemist. That's the Captain Smarter. We've got potential for a little skirmish here. Now Nyx Assassin is up top, so it just took a roundabout route. Time to get angry with each other. And Warlock will pick up that rune. And this makes more sense given the build. Just a lot of you know, posturing here near the river. Rubik should probably join up with his buddies. There is the ward block there on the camp. There are sentries on Lena though, so she'll be able to block that. And this is where we're going to have to keep our attention, the aggressive tri-lane, where we should expect to see the most action. However, in mid we'll have Puck versus Warlock. Puck should have the advantage in this lane, I would expect. And then down bottom we have Templar Assassin up against Clockwork. As mentioned, it's a, it's a little unusual to have TA in the solo safe lane. She can certainly do it, but uh, she does have mana problems, so I'd at least expect an early Basilius out of her to make up for a lack of bottle, unless she's going to be bottle crowing, as she's not really in a position to contest the runes. But poking up back up top. Juggernaut, 3 for 1, Alk still over in this lane. Support's trying to pull, no such luck. They've now dewarded though. That ward just within range to remove that. Now going to come back and help out. Both tri lanes pretty solid. I wouldn't necessarily give an obvious advantage to either one. We've got the stun on Alchemist, but he's leveled up Grievous Greed at level one. I feel that's a bit greedy for a three for a tri lane versus tri lane scenario. Level two, sure, but would expect these would really want the stun at level one. But at least in the defensive situation, it is the defensive side where you aren't as dependent on kills as you have that pull camp 
as they have dewarded it once they be once they're able to do that they're going to going to be able to start to gain advantage in terms of of experience but here we go there's the concoction but the stun and spins first blood at the same time went mid warlock actually getting it that probably shouldn't happen alchemist going to be able to survive that checking back towards mid i'm not sure what happened just a mental blunder i suppose on the side of puck there it really isn't anything on the side of warlock to work off of perhaps just misjudging the strength of early fatal bonds as he it is at level two along with uh along with that shadow ward it's easy to underestimate that the amount of damage coming out as it is damage over time it, it's harder to keep a mental idea of how much damage that will actually do but that gets Warlock off to a very nice start. My question will now be if he's going to be going for an early Midas for levels, as we originally saw when Warlock start popped up for its brief period in the pro scene before dissipating back into kind of obscurity. Or just going to go for a bit more solid, well-rounded choice. A little poke there and impale on Rubik. Light Strike Array manages to miss all three, just right in the middle. And not a little, lot happens there. Pathetic. Only four last hits right now on this Alchemist. He's playing safe, perhaps a little too safe, but you can understand a lot of lockdown. Blade Fury, very scary early on, especially when you can hit that Impale followed up by Split Earth. got a little pause here we can take a look at where everybody is as we have a reconnect puck with an early orb of venom i have never seen this on puck orb of venom not as effective on ranged heroes you don't get the same slow if we check here it's a four percent slow so it's almost nothing a 12% on the melee, but either way, it does do the same poison damage. So a little extra harass, perhaps feeling like that's what you need to do on the Warlock. Just harass him out of lane. I feel like Puck perhaps would have better luck with kill potential as opposed to just harass. Harass, but uh, interesting choice. And innovative, as I have, I've never seen that, and actually never considered it. On Clockwork, a couple of gloves of haste. He's out of regen. That's going to be a bit tough. Ta with plenty left. It looks like she's getting much better, the much better of this lane. Uh, completely out of mana, but has picked up a Sage's Mass, so we could be seeing a Silius Ring and early Ocula does have a courier headed out to her and there's the uh, ring of protection so that is an early Basilius as as expected on the TA so that is going to be her substitute for a bottle and so far she's leading the way 19 19 last hits with nine denies and that's up against two last hits and one deny on clockwork is absolutely brutal in this bottom lane. Going for that max refraction first with one point in side blades and meld the classic build. And this is really rough right now on the clockwork. And only going to get worse with the uh proper mana regen coming out to her but again we gotta keep an eye on this top lead no kills as of yet up here we had a close call on the alchemist but there wasn't enough damage coming out to finish him off we do see alk is at level four that's up against just barely level three on the juggernaut so he does have a full level advantage on jug but not getting the farm only six last hits up against ten on the juggernaut and again, playing it very, very safe. Another ward has come out here, a sentry ward this time, blocking out the camp. Impale on Lena. 
There's the Blade Fury. He's got boots. She's not going to be able to get away, but the stun may save her just barely enough. Light Strike Array on top. Will this be a kill here? Juggernaut very low, down to 60 HP, but looks like he'll get away. Edict forcing them back. Split Earth now. Warlock rotates. There's Chaotic Offering. That gets Rubik. At the same time, Lashrak not able to get away. Lena salves up, so she manages to stay in the fight. Alchemist trying to juke through the trees, but Warlock's right on top of him. One more right click, there it is. And that's a double kill on the Warlock. That works out to be a killing spree. Three kills in this game lifts him up, but I'm not sure this is the best idea. The Golem's still there. They do not have enough burst to bring him down. Now Rubik in a lot of trouble. Awkward movements here. He's down to 115 inch. HP. This Warlock does 75 damage. That's a fourth kill going to the Warlock. And one more kill. Lena dove upon. And all in all, we lose the Alchemist, Lena, and Rubik up top. All that just for the Lashrac. And this could perhaps turn into a push, an early push up here on Tier 1. Got Puck having rotated, but is it going to be enough? Illusory Orb flies through, but with Edict damage too much, there's the fortification. But there really isn't the support in close enough, and that goes to waste. And Warlock gets the last hit off to an excellent start. 1900 gold. He could. He could grab a Midas right now. It's six and a half minutes in, not too shabby if he went that route for the timing. But instead, just going to go straight in for Aghanim Scepter with the point booster. Down on bottom during this whole time, Templar Assassin able to free farm down here. Pushing up the tower at 32 last hits with 18 denies in this lane. Got her treads. I w given that she went the treads build, I would expect drums next. That's where we saw it most often. A little harass going out on the puck, getting pretty low between the Shadow Ward and Fatal Bonds. Boom, there it goes. Now the clockwork is rotated in toward mid. Back up top, just the Nyx Assassin left up here. He's at level 4. So still a bit off before he can start moving around the map under Veil of Vendetta. Juggernaut, level 4 as well. So he's having a bit of a tough time in terms of levels. Here comes the unstable con concoction. It's up in time. He gets it off, but Juggernaut there to help out with the Blade Fury and push him back. Should be able to get him, but with uh, some unclear movements. Looks like now Alchemist going to go down one more hit. No! Creeps getting in everybody's way. Alchemist, Juggernaut, and Nyx alike. Nyx manning up gets very low. But he'll get away as well. Close calls on both sides. But no blood spilled. 5-1 in the game right now. And down bottom. Missed it there. TA getting a kill on Clockwork. Now going on Puck. Puck in a lot of trouble. One more right click. There it is. Double kill to the Templar Assassin as if she needed any help. Gets even further ahead. And it's going very one way, very fast towards the Radiant side. 7 to 1. 4 0 1 on the Warlock. 2 0 0 on the Templar Assassin. Looking at the net worth, we see those right up on top because of it. Plus those last hits where they're on top of the board all around. Chaotic Offering thrown out, going for the Rubik. That actually ends up being a bit of a waste. As Rubik gets away, is there anything else with Fatal Bonds? No. Blockwork actually cogs in the Golem. Looking for that bounty, and Puck gets it. 100 gold towards him. So Kurito says thank you for the donation at the same time. TA gets the last hit on that bottom tower. That's her drums done. We saw this popularized more recently in terms of a mobility build as opposed to just 
buying up a blink dagger to blink meld in going for drums yasha instead to build up that movement speed often that was with treads though as you become to be less of a one hit burst damage and want a bit more a few more attacks and a little more survivability Camping out this double damage rune, saving that for the Warlock. He fills up his bottle. Closing in just one piece away from that Aghanim Scepter as he has his Ogre Club Point Booster and Staff of Wizardry. At the, at the same time though, Alchemist finally getting some room to farm just a little bit. Evil's Greed going to come into effect, been maxing that along with Unstable Concoction. No points in the Acid Spray as of yet. Well, he's up there though, a push comes out mid and that'll be another tower, this time going to the Juggernaut. He's looking very good as well. After a, perhaps a bit of a slow start catching up, his Phase Boots will be done along with another 600 gold in his pocket. Green Dude's top thing is about to get knocked over. Shrek and Nyx rotating both up top. Alk's still up here, just gonna farm up the jungle instead. Not going to be spotted out, it doesn't look like, so he'll be all right as long as he makes reasonable movement and not walking back into any sort of trap. Clockwork having a rough time in terms of farm. Still on brown boots and those gauntlets he had early on. Add it on. A magic stick, but he's getting very low thanks to Fatal Bonds and actually goes down to it. And Warlock is cleaning up 5 0 and 1. Down towards bottom, Lena perhaps overestimating herself, walking right into Templar Assassin. They knew she was there. And a lot of burst and down she goes. 1,400 gold sitting on TA. Again, the typical build next would be to see a Yasha. See, she would be getting close to that. 500 gold off. Unstable concoction pop, but not going to get enraged. And looks like we may end up with a fight up here on top. Chaotic Offering is available. Warlock at level 9. So still level 1 on that Chaotic Offering. But going to be very effective. The level's relatively low on the rest of the Dire team. And we've got everyone but TA up here. TA split pushing that bottom tower. It's down to two thirds of its health. And if this goes on long enough, she'll bring it down. And looks like that's what the uh, Radiant is doing. They're just buying time. Warlock has the Ogonim Scepter now, and now they're ready to engage. There's a double golem. Lena instantly down. No, one more hit. And she does go down. We got a cog catches nobody. I heard a Omni Slash down here. That will finish off. Alchemist double kill towards the Warlock. Juggernaut not able to finish off Rubik. But that's three for zero. The Shrak gets very low, but will survive. And at the same time, bottom tower goes down to Templar Assassin. 12 to 1. Towers falling left and right. And now I wonder if there's anything left for the Dire team to do. Very rough indeed. And it's going to fall squarely on the shoulders of this Alchemist. Runs in with Unstable Concoction. Not sure that's going to be enough. He's level 8, but he's got Midas and Brown Boots. Jug spins and TPs out. Spin actually runs out before the TP, so if they had a stun available, they could have blocked him. Now Unstable Concoction, but he gets impaled. Can he get it off? He does. The follow-up Dragon Slave does good damage, and Warlock finally goes...
Alchemist in trouble. He'll not get away thanks to the Fatal Bonds. TA trying to clean this up. One more hit on the puck. Finishes off puck. One more on the clockwork. Turns around hooks, but it's not enough. Triple kill to the Templar Assassin. Looked like finally the Dyer would have something going for them. But no, Farrah rotates and cleans everybody up at the cost of the Warlock. And 16 to 3, your score at 15 minutes in, averaging a kill a minute now. Dr. Popular looking to lead his team to victory. As Juggernaut has actually gone Blade Fury stats. This used to be popular, but then we saw the influx of healing ward being just realizing just how good that is, and we started seeing Max Blade Fury and Healing Ward or 411 builds. And stable concoction gets thrown, but Blade Fury adds the magic immunity and is able to avoid the stun. This does a little damage and nothing else. Grievous Greed applies on Midas. I actually didn't know that. Never thought about it. Makes sense. Rubik moving around with brown boots and wand. Tough game for supports on the Dire. Now TA running straight in. Perhaps overextending, but support rotating now. Cogs help push out, but here's the uh, here comes the Chaotic Offering and Omni Slash. There's two dead. TA does get brought down, though. And at this point, I almost feel as if Clockwork and Rubik for TA is a good trade for, Ray for uh, Dyer. Lena going to be brought down as well. Now it's not so great. So they lose three there. Perhaps the mid tower. Healing Horde now up a point in that. And that will help sustain the push. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And down goes the mid tower. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. The golems run out. And the push stops there. One outer tower remaining. It doesn't look like the radiant side caring to leave that up for very much longer. TA is back on bottom split pushing. And she did end up going for that Yasha. Actually missed the kill. Rubik getting a kill on Lashrak. Being a little too brazen here in the enemy jungle, caught out. And they're able to get a free kill. Every little bit helps, as we see. 18 minutes in, 10,000 experience the lead, and 14,000 the gold lead. Oh. Bottom tower is under oh, for Radiant. TA waiting in the wings. She's all alone here, though. And we'll rotate back down. So the question becomes, what's the next item? The most natural would be to finish up a Manta style, but she could go for more damage. MKB or Desolator has enough for a Mithril Hammer if that's what she wanted to do. But with 2,000 banked up, could be an ultimate orb for the Manta. And down goes Nyx Assassin. Another out too far, but here comes the real pain. There's the Shadow Ward, Chaotic Offering up in 10. Two shots from Templar Assassin on Lena. Now goes Clockwork Rubik, the next target. Closing the distance is TA. Here comes the Meld Strike. Half the health gone now. Follow-up Split Earth. And a last hit through all that manages to, manages to be the Warlock sneaking it in there.
Oh, we have a disconnect on Warlock. Bad dude's top tower gonna fall over soon. And perhaps we'll have a pause here in a second. There it is, as we'll wait on him. Alchemist down bottom, just trying to do anything he can, but even with Grievel's Greed, he's still only second on the board. Templar Assassin leading the way hugely. 9,500, almost doubling up the next highest on the board. And then Juggernaut keeping up with the Alchemist. He actually picks up a Crystallis. So that's going to be the damage item of the day for her. And work very well also. You see Nyx Assassin closing in on fishing a mech. 650 away from that. Warlock has boots of travel now on top of the on top of his Ogden Scepter. Dyer's top tower has Looking fallen. to motor it around the map. 395 movement speed on him. TA though, moving at 414. Midas on cooldown. <laughs> Remember your Midas, man. It comes very hard. Now, 10,000 is where it's really scary in terms of experience and gold, but not impossible. Rack's still up, and the, it's not... And... Dr. Popular's Radiant team, while looking good, doesn't necessarily have the best late game, though solid enough. Caught there in the cogs, but Chaotic Offerings says enough of this. Instantly dead are Clockwork and Rubik. And perhaps now comes the push onto Tier 3, or rotate into Rashawn Pit, retreat, get an Aegis, and then push in to tier three there's nothing really that the dire can do about this right now the only thing you can say though is that chaotic offering is in is on cooldown so that big team fight ulti is not available if they were to contest and the everyone is back up however with meld strike that minus armor they're going to plow through this before there can even be a reaction even if they wanted to down it goes the aegis looks like it will go to juggernaut who is 400 away from finishing a Desolator. So I would expect them to want to wait for the Desolator before pushing in. The minus armor on that tower will be very useful. But no, they're just going to force it out. Alchemist caught out. Follow up Split Earth. Now, now tra Traps gets actually traps his own teammate in the cogs. No upheaval was going to slow him down either way. Puck actually avoids the strike, but no! A double kill with one auto attack. Now Rubik down. Clockwork the only one left on the field, and he just says, I want to join my teammates in the fountain. That should be it, I would expect. And that's the call. GG's coming out from Dyer, it looks like. Though we should have the final GG coming out of Smarter, the captain. And now we start to see the disconnects. Out! Dr. Popular leading the way in this game. His team brought to victory the Warlock. Having a huge start, going 5-0 and to kick it off. TA dominating bottom. The top lane being a bit of a wash. Worked out to be a very good early on, early game for the Radiant. And they just rode that momentum to victory here. And in just a moment, we'll be able to get the final score screen. And see how it all adds up on the scoreboard.
as we see the final net worth. TA and Warlock all the way up top. Well above everybody else, of course, that's a bit skewed now that the disconnects are there, but uh, was already doubling up. Everybody else on the board was Templar Assassin. And then with the big wins in the team fights, Warlock catching right up to her as well. And we'll get to take a look at the final numbers. 29 to 8, your score. PA going 12, 1, and 5, along with Warlock, Warlock 12, 1, and 9. There's never any real setback. Dr. Popular and Company, take this one.